have enough time to grab my fan before the intro video ended. But guess what? Ha! I still have yeah. it. Uh, uh. <laughs> um, just as a fair warning, this recording is going to be something. Yes. Just, we're throwing that out there now. But welcome to The Cup, the currently unnamed podcast where we put the T in reality. I'm Logan Murphy. Just a gay here with, I've got my Starbucks cup um, with a cherry limeade beverage from a company we no longer sponsor, but I still have the product, so I'm going to use it. Um, mixed with cherry lime La Croix. So today's a good I day. I love you, Nemesis La Croix. Very <laughs> nice choice. With, I, I actually have never had a, a, a La Croix before. Um, some of them are good. Some of them are not. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I feel. LaCroix um, is not my favorite brand of seltzer, I will say. Um, but it's it's decent. Lovely. But anyways, uh, what up, y'all? I am Sam DMV, also known as Little Nisa Long, also known as Sam Don Monteverde. I fucked up the order. Your fellow friendly trans non-binary Filipino Canadian hot mess healing from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And today I've got some turmeric tea because indigestion's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. And I'm Eris Envy, your punk rock hairy Mary fairy, all the way from York, reminding you that maybe they're born with it. Maybe it's generational trauma. That could have gone smoother. Oh, well. Yeah, but you know what? It's one of those. It's one of those. One of those days. Days. And I couldn't. I think of tried to make French. that. I, I tried to make that reference the other day with people that weren't the two of you, and they didn't understand it. And I was like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> but uh, Drag Race France episode three, the ball, the ball. And I'm just gonna get this out of the way, y'all. I'm sad. I'm also sad. I'm angry. We've I'm been not robbed of the best buns in France. I'm angry at that. I'm not angry at the decision. Yeah. I'm mad at the dirt. <laughs> so, Mommy Dearest. Christina. Reference. Thank you. I was like, if what if both of y'all don't know it, I'm gonna be sad. Margo, please. But overall, a good episode. It's a it was a great episode, actually. Not mad. No. Well, I'm mad, but right, yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about it. So we come back into the workroom. Lova La Diva is gone. Not really that sad. Um, okay. And then Bertha makes a comment, and I wanted to talk to y'all about it, because I'm like, I don't know if the translation was weird. I thought overall my translations were pretty good, and I think, Eris, you said you agree. Yeah, they um, changed that this week. It wasn't... And Sam's, uh, it wasn't indistinct French every five fucking seconds. So. It was at one point for me, but it wasn't like too bad. Whereas Sam, she was saying that um, Crave just couldn't get it together. Yeah. And you are actually that... in a country that speaks French. It might be Quebecois French, but it's still fucking French. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wh whoever does subtitles um, for, for Crave jail uh, please do better uh what's that oh, what's the french word for public exec execution oh i don't have one but we could just say guillotine uh, sure or we could say uh maria maria which means to die oh, oh. good anyway um so bertha makes this comment in confessional where she's like I was really concerned about being in the bottom. Maybe I need to stop being 
Bertha so much. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's yeah I, I was confused by this comment. I, no, but I, I... Didn't they say afterwards, like, oh, um, I'm going to take Bertha to other places kind of thing. That yeah. makes more sense than saying I don't need to be Bertha. Yeah. Yeah, what did I... Um... Yeah, she's concerned about being being Bertha, and maybe she should take her somewhere else. I was a little confused by that. I guess I understand it, but like, yeah, yeah, it yeah. it it might have for me for me. I think it, I don't know if that was on part for like Bertha not wording that like correct the way she, the way they wanted to, or yeah. if that was like the captioning. <laughs> I yeah, I'm I'm a little concerned about that. Um not entirely sure, I'll be honest, but yeah. I, but, I wrote it down just as something I thought was interesting. Yeah, but I, I kind of like catch the drift. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, for sure. Well, we come back into the workroom the next day and they're talking about what kind of challenges they want. Lolita says she wants a dance challenge because that's the only thing she's good at. I said no. <laughs> Y'all stop picking on Lonely a banana. She is doing her best. No, she's picking on herself. <laughs> I know. Lolita, Lolita stop picking do on yourself. You're doing your best. Yes. Lolita, please don't do that to yourself because you are beautiful. You are fierce. I'm Mexican her. and talented. Yes. First generation, talented. And they're very protective of that. Oh my God. <laughs> Love a good season now. I, I hate think. you. Anyway, <laughs> we get a mini challenge that is a challenge we've seen before from other franchises, but I love the little, little French spin on it. So we're in pairs and we have to make a video tutorial on making a baguette where one person is the face and one person is the arms. Doesn't that remind me of a, remind y'all of another show? Where one gives space and one is in charge of the hands. Legendary, anyone? Oh. No. I love you, but if you compare this baguette making time no, to Legendary... I, I, I don't know where I was going with that. I was just like, oh. One's giving phase, one's giving hand performance. Babes, I'm trying to get caffeinated it's a again. Hand performance I'm... Party. It's a hand performance party. Anyway. It's a hand... I tried. Do we go back and review past seasons of Legendary? Perhaps. Absolutely. Perhaps. For it. Absolutely. Since we're not, since we're probably not doing Big Brother anymore. Um, so uh, do we want to give the list of how many housemates we hate? Thirteen, I think. The is The theme my... of Yako Wana's Countries of the World. Anyway, the pairs that we have. Daniel Turner too. Bitch, I'm gonna mute you. Anyway. Um, the pairs that we have are Soa and Bertha, no surprise, Cam and Paloma, Ellipse and Brioche, and my personal favorite, La Grande Banana. Grand Banana. Yes. They literally said, oh, the shortest and the tallest person? Sure, let's be a pair. And honestly, it's comedy, so I'm here for it. I was here for it, too. It was you know, a lot they, of fun. There's always the lovely saying, opposites attract. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. So, what did we think of the performances in the challenge overall? I was screaming when Paloma was like, I'm Leticia Ladiva. I was just like, this fucking bitch. I know. I was like, whoa, okay. She was like, that poor woman has been out of your hair for less than... 12 hours and you are shitting in her raw chicken grave how dare you sorry logan you keep like freezing up i know i'm i know i'm trying to change my internet connection i don't know what's happening today there you are okay hi i'm here yes. uh. anyway yeah i thought it was fun i thought it was fun and cute and not a not uh original whatsoever um I don't mind it, it's still really fun to. Yeah, Absolutely. I thought like, I was I thought it was entertaining. Yeah, the winners end up being Ellipse and Brioche. And I was confused. Shocked. Yeah, because I thought they did the weakest. They were still funny, but I thought they I funny. agree completely. I yes. would have given it to either Lolita and Grand Dame. 
I'm trying to think who was the fourth pair. Oh, Soa. So uh, no, I would have given it to Soa, actually. Soa and um, Berta. I think I would have given it to La Grande Banana, personally. I would, I would have also banana. given it to La Grande Banana. The Great Banana. The Great Banana. So, we... That happened. That's just a blip. And we move on to the maxi challenge of the week, which is the ball. We have to serve... Th- Originally, Nikki said two looks, and then it turned out to be, oh, wait, what? Three looks? What? Yes. Also, I just want to point out, Nikki's workroom outfit, I want the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. This white linen situation, I want it. I want to live in it. I might have Jay make it for me. (laughs) In all honesty. Um, you look but lovely, we, gal. You look lovely, gal. So we have to serve three looks. The first being, um, we couldn't remember what it was when we were talking before was, the recording. Yes, I wrote did. it in my notes. It's uh, my own my own private France. Oh, damn. Okay. So, yeah. Is there no French was, translation of hometown look? <laughs> like, bitch, just say that. Well, it's not necessarily hometown. It was either like your, it said area or opinion. So it's like something about France that you enjoy, whether it's a location, a theme, an item, et cetera. And people um, thought of that in different ways. We'll talk about it. The second Mm -hmm. look is French cliches. And then the third look, there was no definitive name, but I'm just calling it Cannes Film Festival Realness, um, made out of beach toys. Yeah. I would have loved, I I think this is a perfectly fine and lovely challenge. I would have loved if the unconventional material of it all had been film related. Mm. Like bring, but I feel like a lot of people would have ended up doing what like the Vivian did on UK one for the design challenge with all of like the VHS. And the the thing is, Aside from the film festival, Cannes is known for being a coastal city, like a very like resort, very beautiful city. Sure, but I believe it's the south of France. I'm going to check it myself is, yeah. before I say that. It okay, is. yeah. But yeah, I would have liked to seen more filmmaking incorporated to it. So I actually have a very fun story regarding the Cannes Film Festival, and um, I don't know if I've told it on the pod before, but I'm assuming I have. So I did film at university for some fucking reason and clearly have nothing to do with that now but um one of my classmates uh mel corker so hi mel if you're watching this mel submitted her film to uh the Cannes film festival for experimental films uh for experimental shots and actually won best experimental shot at Cannes in 2021 i want to say shut up so wow. if you i i'm gonna get the poster because i did save it earlier so if you get the chance to see Where's this damn screenshot? Metamorphosis by Mel Corker, Hafstein Daughter. Please take a look because it's a beautiful film. Oh, I love that. Work. Work. Oh, that's so fun. I love having you as a part of the team because now we have European anecdotes. It just yes. makes me happy. Not everything is North American anymore. <laughs> From the least up. European country of all of Europe. But you know what? It's, it is it is more European than the US and Canada. Than Pacoima will ever be. I've been to Pacoima. Fun fact: it is a city in California. How's the public library there? Um, I have never been to it. I've been through Pacoima, and I stopped at a McDonald's. I think <gasps> not the infamous Pacoima McDonald's where Stacey Lee Matthews works. Love that. No, don't <laughs> do that to Stacy. They made that joke on season three. That's why I was referencing don't the Pacoima do public that library. To Stacey. We wow. love Stacey Lane Matthews. Yeah, yeah, before being British, I am Northumbrian. And before, well, actually, no. It goes in this order. I'm Northumbrian. I'm European. And all the way down here, I'm British. And even below that, I'm English. Valid. Just so we're aware. Valid. Well, so we don't get a whole lot of workroom stuff. Half the episode is on the runway, but no, no, there was a very, very uh, special moment 
I or oh, I'm not. I'm not jumping over it. I'm just saying there wasn't a whole lot. Oh, okay, okay. Oh yeah, no, don't worry, honey. I I wrote down all things. Okay, because okay. We did good, good. get the story from La Grande Dame about how she was a victim of a hate crime. Yes, while living in Nice, and so um, they talk. So the conversation starts with La Grande Dame talking about how she's from Nice. She has a lot of memories with Can. Um, Cam talks about being from the Ardash, which is a region where, like, it seems people are a lot more conservative and it's a lot more difficult to be queer. And then that's when La Grande Dame talks about how she was hate crimed in uh, Nice, um, which prompted her to move to Paris, um, which is disgusting. But I'm happy she made it through and i think it was soa in confessional that says the grand dame is like an enigma it, that wasn't the word she used but it was something like that this mysterious yeah just like uh, being so young because i think she's like my 22 age. oh yeah i do remember that because i was like when she said that she's so young and she's been through so much i checked how old she was 22 same age as me 999 work well not work it's horrible but it's making me like I, I I this is really bad, but like I'm learning more about La Grande Dame and I'm starting to like her even more than I already had at like a baseline. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I'm getting a lot of humanity. I'm honestly getting a winner at it from her. If I'm being I am, honest. yeah. She could, I am. Like with that face and that body, she could be a complete brat, as we've famously heard said about a lot of drag performers. Cam. What? But no, I actually, I'm very endeared to La Grande Dame at this point, and I like her quite a lot, and I would love to see her succeed. I mean, I know we'll probably get into this at the end of the episode, but I do have in my mind a top three, top four. I do too. Kind of do as well. Based on what I want to happen, and also based on where the edit is leading me. Um, yeah, yeah. I will say, just, we'll talk more about it. This episode was like the first shock elimination for me that I remember experiencing from Drag Race in a very long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> I don't remember being this surprised at an elimination in a while. This is like so strange because I was expecting La Brioche to be in it for the long haul. Yeah. Yep. Because compared to some people who are still here, I really just... She gives a lot more personality and she's much more enjoyable as a character. I honestly thought she would have gotten like, Fifth. oh, who's that person that annoyed us on Espanol? Oh, Estrella. I thought she was going to give us like the Estrella oh. storyline where it's like unthreatening finalist. But I thought she at least her. had top five. If I'm I agree. Yeah. Top five is what I was pitching for. But We'll talk about why that didn't happen and why it was unfortunately completely valid. Um, and then. I think the part that you didn't want me to skip, Sam. <laughs> oh, no. Um, no, I was thinking about the Le, Le Grand Dame, but oh, uh, word. Um, but also, yes. I said it last week. I wanted to see more Kitty Smile, and god oh, damn it, yay. they gave me Kitty Smile. I, that, I yeah. love him. Also, I would like to marry him. I don't know if he's single, but like I would love to be friends with Kitty Smiles. He is just so fun. A great addition to this panel. Mm. I'm also Truth. very glad that we got to see you talk about ballroom yes. on a franchise of Drag Race that isn't Drag Race US. Because yeah. we get very little discussion of it on Drag Race US, but I'm glad we got to have a conversation about it on Drag Race France. Um, ballroom has not been in Europe, to my knowledge, for a, a for quite a very long time. It's only such a recent thing. Um, 10, I also have another 10, fun... 15 year... years, if I remember right. Something like that. I have a very fun anecdote now that I would like to share. So, Nelly, if you're watching this, hi. Um, coming to the re uh, realization, I have very few Scandinavian friends that aren't non-binary. But um, So, Nelly used to run the Luna Cafe here in York. And um, Nelly went to high school with someone who basically started the ballroom scene in Helsinki in Finland. Yes. And I don't know that person's name, and I'll try and remember, it and I'll maybe comment it down below if I can remember. But um, yeah, it's there's ballroom in Finland, but it's sparing here in England. Work. 
I mean, it's spreading, and I love to mm. see it because the ninjas yeah. just hosted a ball. I believe it was the ninjas who hosted it. I think it was the ninjas who hosted it because I watched their stream. They recently held one in Amsterdam. God. I know because the person who won Anna. best dressed was N I N J A. Yeah. Yes. I love them. But yeah, so Kitty comes in, talks about ballroom, and then does a runway class with them. Loved. 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 I Just, want another Vogue mini challenge like we got all the way in season one US. You mean Nina Flowers and the rest of them no gang? <laughs> I said okay, what I said. Okay, at least Chanel got a passable dip in there, but everyone else was... Every, by, and by everybody else, I, see, I mean Rebecca Glasscock. Re yeah, how did Rebecca... Actually, you know, I, yeah. No, actually, I do if think... We ever do, if, we, and... if we ever don't have Drag Race on our hands... I want us to do a, re a review of season one because I just want to spend hours on end talking shit about Rebecca Glasscock. <laughs> like, uh, like, oh, that just sounds marvelous. All of my angers and stress about work, I can just let out on the internet for also, a person who's probably... God. Kitty makes some really great music for Voguing, so check that out. Oh, There's some of his music on the ballroom playlist on Spotify. Oh, work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I knew he was a DJ, but I wasn't. I, I should have assumed, but mm -hmm. Sam, you were saying something, hun? No, it was just I, it was just acting y'all like kind of just affirming your points. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, we've made it to the runway, so already be. Yeah, we already made it to the runway. So if you watched our review of All-Star 7 and specifically the All-Star 7 ball, um, we did a point system for that ball um, where we graded every look and then talked about um, the points at the very end. We all agreed we wanted to do that for this. So that's what we're going to do. Is it out of five again? Um, yeah, we could do five. Five makes math easy for me, so... Right. Yeah, you. And so the grading scale that we're going to be doing is 25% for both of the first two categories and 50% for the look that they made. Mm. So that is how the math will math today. Because that's how we tanked vaginosis last time. Yeah. Because the first two were great, and then... Um... I'm curious if we're all going to have the same two winners again, because the last time we did this, all four of us had the same two winners. I don't think we're going to this time. No, because it's like it's French and that's different. It is different. Overall, I thought this was one of the best balls that we've seen on Drag Race in a very long time. Mm. It, this was a very strong ball. I thought okay. everybody did, at the very least, passable in yes. most categories. Yeah. Yes. Like, there was no La La Rebag moment. I want La La no Rebag on our TV. And I want them to that to be a season where they ask them to do a one of their old looks, like a re redemption. I want a redemption runway, and I want to see the back look redone. <laughs> this time she mean. actually opened up the bags before putting it on the corset. <laughs> oh, did we have a golden boot for Drag Race Espana? No, they no. only did it for 13 and 14. I, no, but like, did we choose our golden boot? I feel like that's something we should do. I'd like I'm cool to sound I'm cool to start doing it for all these seasons. So am I. Cool. Slay. Let's start with well, so on here it's sweet France of mine. That's what we're gonna call it. And that's what we're whoa, gonna say. Whoa, 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 sweet France of mine. I hate you. First up I is Paloma. You. I love this. Do we even need to discuss this? This is an immediate five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also love that she said, oh, Paloma as a character is a redhead. Because in my mind, I was like, I'd always pictured Paloma with like dark hair, but you know what? Good for I her. Mean, yeah, I imagine like yeah. a deep purple for Paloma. I don't well, know. Well, to be fair, we did get uh, red hair in the promo. We and the entry look. And the entry look. Yeah, I guess she, I, I never would have expected it either. But no, this is so immaculately done. It made also, me want cheese real bad. Mm -hmm. Just a, one second to talk about Paloma, actually. Do you know the... So the look that Paloma walked into the workroom in, do you know that wasn't created for Drag Race? Oh. I found oh. out that was just a look she had. 
But the wig she wore for the entrance was made by Cam's boyfriend. Oh. Oh. Good. Very much wig artistry. Like, I will talk all the shit in the world about Cam because wearing on my last nerve. But Cam's boyfriend is an exceptionally talented wig artist. And whoever makes Cam's corsets is exceptionally talented. Enough about Cam. I love this look. I love the colours. It's very Renaissance unfair. I love what's going on with the shoulders. I love. I want cheese real bad. I would also love cheese real bad. And I'm lactose intolerant, so like... The same... Same um, sis, same. <laughs> the, I really the details, especially with all the with everything that's going on um on her head, um the silhouette of it all, like I really love this. I love the color specifically, and the color choice of this like olive green mixed with all of the orange and then the orange hair that just stands out to me so much. Yeah, it's a five. Mm. It makes me want Cassio Cavallo Podolico real bad. Work Diva. It's work La Diva. Diva. Sorry. Work La Diva. Work La Diva. Lolita Banana. I love the story of this. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and I have another anecdote, not related to one of my European friends, but from personal experience this time. Uh, so the thing with like chaining locks to bridges, I don't know. Is that, do people do that in North America as well? Um, not that I would know, but I, I know, like, they would probably travel to Europe for that. Logan? What's up? So Sorry. do people in America also do this thing where you write your, like, couples will write their names on a lock and, like, lock it to a bridge? Is that I've in America? never seen that happen. Okay, so that's actually, like, a pretty common thing throughout Europe, to my knowledge, because it happens here in the UK. Mm. And I know that because there's a bridge in Leeds that crosses over, like, city centre of Leeds to sort of where all the universities are. And they had to put a sign up to tell people to stop doing it because there were so many locks on this bridge. And it wasn't even, like, a fancy bridge ever. It was just a bridge over, like, an intersection. But there was so many locks on the bridge that it started to damage the structural integrity <laughs> of the bridge. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really sweet and, like, beautiful thing, and I adore this look for it. The look underneath is kind of plain, but I will forgive it just because the, like, chain dress is probably super fucking heavy. Yeah. And she, it like, it hugged her silhouette, and she looked gorgeous, and I love the touch of red in the shoes, the nails, and the bray. Yeah, she looked gorgeous, and I really like this. It was very touching. Yeah, it. I'm going to give it a 4.5. Only because I think she could have elevated just a little bit further. Yeah. yeah. But yeah I'm gonna... Sorry, Logan. Oh, yeah. I 4.5 for me. I'm also going to give it a 4.5. I'm also giving it a 4.5. Well, how generic of us all to give the same score? I mean, I was going to give it a 5, but then I compared it to what um, Paloma. Paloma Faith was wearing, so... Not below my feet. Not those. Anyway. <laughs> Le Grand Dom. <laughs> okay, I will say this. The fact that she had to fucking duck walk, not even just duck walk, but old way duck walk under the arch of the entryway to the runway was so camp to me. Yeah. I she, don't know. That was a reference. great duck walk, too. <laughs> I don't know this reference. I don't get the reference. I don't need to. She looked fucking spectacular. I loved every inch of it from head to toe. Hey, and she um, was sorry, giving. No, no, finish your thought. She was giving mug down. Hey, um, uh, Marina, this is how you do it. <laughs> this is this is what Ma Marina wish she looked like. Who? Mm -hmm. I don't know her. Mariana. <laughs> Marinara saw. No, no. I don't know her. Mario? Yeah, I don't know her. No, but um, oh my god, this look. Oh, it's so it, good. Oh, it's so good. Was okay, so we'll talk about Legrand Dom, like obviously two more times. She was doing so many different things with her makeup this episode. 
like when she comes out on the second look, which we'll talk about, she didn't even, I had to double take because I didn't realize who it was. Mm. Like she didn't do, like this look, she did her traditional eye shape. And I think for the third one she did, but the second look, there's something a little bit different that she did. And I really appreciate it. With that said, this is perfect. I'm giving it a five. That's a five. Oh yeah, it's a five. Work, Ladita. Sorry, I definitely wasn't looking at a picture of that bitch who died on that one episode of Sex in the City. Oh, Cynthia? at all. Oh, at all. Oh, at all. Ellipse. This is how you do rainbow flag and not make it tacky. Yeah, yes. so I love. Yeah, I think, yeah, the best, like, execution of, like, rainbow on the runway Cause it's hard, cause it's hard to, kind of, make all those colors work well together. So just very big up to um, ellipse for that. Yeah, I loved it. My only thing is, it is a pride flag, and I want it. I feel like ellipse probably already had this costume, and didn't, yeah. and just shoot put it into like the box of okay this is gonna be my friends look however i do love that the intersex flag is like the biggest part of the outfit yes. because i don't usually see people incorporate that into right pride flag looks um but it looks like it's made of very lovely fabric i love the sh hair shoes it's a it's really good and um yeah my only thing is i feel like ellipse being where she no she's not from toodaloo that's where um Ladiva was from. She's from Bordeaux, so I would have loved to see something in regards to Bordeaux, because I don't know anything about Bordeaux. But other mm. than that, gorgeous! I'm going to give it a 4. I'm going to give it a 4.5. I am also going to give it a 4. And I think the look itself is very well done. It's a very well executed look. She looks very good in it. But for this runway category, like you were saying, Eris, I just wanted something a little bit more creative. Because, yeah. like, pride flag, great. But, like, I would have loved if the... Because the back of the cape was all black. I would have loved if that was um, red, white, and blue. French flag. Like, yeah. That would have mm. put it over the top for me. Um, but like I you believe... said, Eris, I'm pretty sure she had this already and made it work for the category, which I respect the hell out of because it's less money you have to spend. Mm. But also, I'm pretty sure the colors of the French flag recently changed. Not like massively, just like a different shade. But that would have been so funny if she did the red, white, and blue and then she got on Drag Race and it was technically outdated. Oh my God. That because be it's taken that long to air. Oh my God. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a good look. Ellipse looks good. Yeah, yeah. La brioche. Okay, I have a lot to say. Okay. Mostly at the direction of the judges. How did they not like this? Yeah, that's where I was going to go with it too. I... This is adorable. Like, this is so cute. And I don't get the reference, but it's probably something very personal and something La Brioche grew up with. Yeah. And I, yeah, I love that. I love the colors and I think she looks gorgeous from head to toe. I will say this episode, Librioche's makeup wasn't quite the best it's been. Yeah, I agree with you. But I mm -hmm. do relate to Librioche on a personal level of being the gal who loves the um, thin eyebrows and garage door eyeshadow. But other than that, I love this whole outfit. Yeah. I think that's where like a few points like a bit will be deducted for me too i like everything about this except for the makeup i don't love the wig either but i do agree yeah it's it's a well executed look i agree with you eris i did i don't know the reference but i don't necessarily need to know the reference to to appreciate this look um mm -hmm. let me give her a four a four Catra. I think that's four. Catra. 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 Yeah, Catra. Listen, I don't speak French. I'm but trying I'll let to. The funky music do the talking, talking. I'm talking. trying to. That's so. That's so. Or Catra. as as people say for short, cats. Which is why we have the pun with un, deux, trois, cam. 
<laughs> that thank you for explaining that because I've been very confused. Yeah, the no, whole time. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I've been yeah. so confused. I appreciate yeah, so the joke, it. The joke is like one, two, three, four. Three, four. I, I got that. I didn't know what the because I know what four is in French, but I didn't understand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So I demuse. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. This is amazing. And I love that she went, instead of going French, she went with her heritage. And I forget what, oh. She did mention, it did say in the subtitle something about West Indian. Yeah, for um, her Honduras. It was one of those countries, and I feel really bad for not knowing. It's the West Indies, which includes like um, that whole area of like um, Honduras, Belize, the Caribbean, like that Caribbean. whole area. Nicaragua. I, no, it was an island nation, and I don't remember. And I feel really, really bad that I don't remember. I think it might have been um, Belize or something like that. Oh Lord, something. Like I will that. see if I can find it now. Thank you. Um, but with that being said, I love this pr this print on her. I love the headpiece. I love the draping of the sleeves. Just everything she did felt very, very personal to her, but also very fashion forward nah. at the same time. Yeah. So, um, Soa was apparently born in Martinique. Martinique. Is, Martinique. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Which is uh, one of the islands in the West Indies. Thank you. Um, but yeah, honoring her Martinique heritage while also still keeping a fashion element to this look, I really appreciate. Yeah. Um, I also would like to say, like, this, these, the pattern as well as the white, um, they, it complements her skin so well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I haven't seen a look from her where she doesn't look at, she doesn't look good. I may not have liked the outfit itself, but like, I haven't seen an outfit where she doesn't look good. Yeah. I, I, I could agree with that opinion as well. Honestly, I'm gonna give it a five. I don't care. No, I think this also deserves a five. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a five. Yes, my influence. I'm kidding. All right. Oh, I do. I have something to bring up after we've done filming. Work, Diva. Un, deux, trois, cam. Yes. She is giving different silhouettes. And that's all I ask for. With that said, I love this. I love this. This is what thing... I imagine the pigeons in London look like because they're just so rich because they got all that public funding. <laughs> I say that like East London isn't massively deprived. It only flew, still. flew from Paris to London. From London to Paris. Na, 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 na. Da, 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 why? It's LED. I put the D in diamond. With the seagull look, and I was living for that. But this was executed so much better. In terms I, don't of know. I love Ellie Diamond. Ellie Diamond is a star, and everyone I know who has worked with Ellie Diamond has said Ellie is lovely. I love Ellie. What we're I not going to do is compare this lovely garment that Cam brought to Drag Race to that fucking seagull atrocity that graced the main stage of Drag Race UK. Oh. No, I'm sorry. That's that's just where my mind went. I am i didn't mean to compare the two, even though I kind of am. Jail. <laughs> Prison! Uh, no! 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 <laughs> oh, but, but, uh, right, I need to get my key about this, this look, look before we fall apart. I love this look so much, though. This is very well executed. 
Uh, yes. The feather is it's the it's the it's all the individual like feathers. Yeah. Thing. It's the feathers, it's the wizard sleeve, it's the different silhouette, it's the pants, it's the once again lovely wig by Cam's boyfriend, who I'm gonna try and get the name up now because I feel bad that I we're just calling him Cam, Cam's boyfriend. Um, yeah, which isn't fair to him and his artistry. Yeah. No, I completely agree. The 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 wig, I just I love this color on Cam. I don't think she'll do more of it because that just doesn't seem like something she would probably do every day. But I do love this this silver color on her. Okay. The individual, um, yeah, just uh, ugh, all of it. it. It's a five. Christoph, Christoph Mecca, and I get it. Christoph. Five. I'll also say from the look of Christoph's um, Instagram, this wig was originally longer, so I don't know if it got cut oh. once it was. Made to drag race, but apparently it was one beyond shoulder length. I wish oh. I could throw the image up, but I'm being lazy. Burke. Mm. Okay. Slay I'm Diva. Also, I'm also giving this a five. Well, this is gonna be really difficult when we've given almost everyone a five. What what can we say? The French girlies are bringing it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Except for Low Diva. Work La Diva. La Big Bertha. I don't care what the judges say. This was fucking spectacular. I also don't care what the judges say. I yeah, this was camp. This, this was is camp. probably the best reveal we've had on Drag Race in a long time. So I don't. I. I mean, I saw the reveal coming because obviously they had they put, put a big the, fucking mat out. Yeah, I was like, y'all couldn't have made it any more inconspicuous. Like, really. But I did really, really like it. I wasn't. I didn't know what to expect necessarily. And I was really, really happy with the way that this turned out. For yeah, because I was just ready for a tear away and way too much glitter. I was expecting the exact same thing she did for her talent show episode one. Mm. Like, oh, that's what I was honestly expecting. But I love that it was anything but that. Yeah, but I love this. Like, I, the outfit itself, like, regardless of the reveal, is very well made. I think denim Marie Antoinette is such an interesting concept. And I love this wig it's kind of priscilla queen in the desert in the way that it's like a sculpted wig it is very priscilla and it's got the little bow on the head but yeah this is why in my mind and we'll get into this later about who he thinks in the top i think bertha is probably gonna have weeks where bertha struggles but i am seeing bertha at the end of this competition i could also see bertha at the end of this competition yeah unless there's another sewing challenge but we'll see <laughs> Yeah, my jaw like dropped to the floor once all that water came out. Yeah, it just came from every angle, literally every angle. Oh, and when it and when like when obviously all the water's gonna get on that outfit too. It still looked really good. Yeah, luckily denim doesn't. Sorry, denim does hold water, but denim dries quite easily, yeah. and it doesn't misshape when it gets wet like if i got this shirt wet it would be like stuck to my body whereas yeah. you get denim wet and it doesn't really stick to you that much that's no. true which is probably no, the, why this outfit is made of denim the fibers are very porous so that that helps mm -hmm. um the one thing i don't like about this look is the train i don't think the train <laughs> is necessary at all um i honestly think it kind of just takes away from the look because I rewatched the runway, walk watching her walk, and she trips over the train a few times, and so because of that, I'm gonna give her a four point five. But I think this look is immaculately done. I uh, I'm still gonna give it a five. I'm gonna At give least it a five. valid party. God's Category game. two, French cliche. Ooh. Paloma. Oh, I love this. I love this. Mm -hmm. Because the idea of like the artsy French person is such a like, it is the French cliche other than hon 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 and baguettes. So wait, I'm thinking of stereotypes. Okay, but it's still a very cliche French thing. And I loved it. I loved all the like splatters. I loved that it was more simple and clean because what we've seen from Paloma has been a bit on the grander side of things. So it's nice to like pull it back a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that she got her titties out. 
I think I maybe would have liked maybe like a choker or some kind of necklace. I want jewelry with this. Yeah, yes. I really do. I also maybe would have gone for a different color with the hair. I don't I like think she, hair color. Yeah, she's trying to emulate a paintbrush, but it's giving a little bit more Betty Spaghetti than it is paintbrush. And I want the Art Attack Fantasy. What if we had, like, kind of the similar hair that Benedita had with the troll doll? Not there. Sure, yeah. Honestly, a paintbrush, like, Eureka Loaf, I would have loved. Yeah. Yeah. I would have loved. Um, yeah, I'm missing some sort of, like, jewelry. Even if it was, like, a paint splatter bracelet or something like that would have, like... Camp added to yeah, it. Like, yeah, like a paint splatter like necklace too. Yeah, I also mm. want a belt here. I understand there's a corset underneath, but I want something breaking up this whole middle section. Mm. I think what I will say is what I really have come to enjoy about Paloma at episode three is that Paloma's right on the intersection of camp and fashion yeah. and makes it really work. Because sometimes you get people who say that they're both camp and fashion. And the truth is, they're just camp. Yeah. Whereas I think Paloma gets references and gets the silhouettes and gets everything she needs to get, whilst also... Sorry, I just saw a really big spider in the corner of this room, Jesus Christ. Oh. But um, yeah, so she gets silhouettes, she gets she gets the fashion of it, and she melts out with camp and makes couture. Yeah. Like I said, Paloma's one of the front runners for me already at this point. Yeah. Yeah. No, I could definitely see Paloma going all the way to... Um, this is a very solid look for me. Um, I'm a, a bit like on the fence about the hair. I wish. I also wish that she could have accessorized more as well. But otherwise, this look as a whole is very well executed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. I'm gonna give it a four point five. I am gonna give it a four point five. Yes, I'm gonna be different and give it a fall. Valid. Party, Lolita Banana. It's a yellow vest. It is a yellow vest. Okay, but it's such a smart idea. And regardless of what everyone thinks of the outfit, French people do not take shit from their government lying down. And that is something I admire a lot about the French because the political climate in the UK, as people might have seen at the minute, is very unstable right now. And um, I feel like the UK, one thing, the uh, the problem the UK has is that we just don't protest and we don't strike and we don't riot. Like the way the strikes have been received by the general public here has been atrocious. And the fact that the government we have in the UK are doing the damnedest they can to get rid of our right to protest, which is a human right, is yeah. pretty horrifying. It's nice to see that France, uh, like people in France, stir shit up and start the rev- start those revolutions and start those fires because they will not take shit from their government. The price of fuel goes up in France and you bet everyone's walking out of their job, which is why I really, really appreciate this look. Um, as for the actual details of the look, I love that uh, what all the meanings on the posters meant. And then I like that the last sign was strike and then oppose. I love the silhouette of this. And I think it's a really great idea to turn something as ugly as fluorescent safety jackets into something this pretty. And I also love the choker. This is, I'm just going to say, this is a five. This is one of my favorite looks of this ball. I love every single choice she has made here down to the stocking, the necklace, all of it, it's just absolute perfection for me. This is one of my absolute favorites. Um, I'm giving it a five. Yeah, this is like one of my favorites as well. Like this obviously stood out stood out for me. I think this was executed very well. The look itself is amazing. Um, yeah, no, I, I really love this. Um, yeah, th- this is a five for me as well. Five. I just realized we didn't talk about the guest judges, so we'll do it at the end. <laughs> yes. Because I forgot. La Grande Dame. See, here, she's doing something a little bit different with her makeup, and I like it. There's a lot more blush. She's, like, accentuated mm. a little bit more. 
she's like carved out her eyes and her face a little bit more than she normally does Mm -hmm. um as far as this look goes she talks about marie antoinette i didn't get that but i'm also not french so all of my understanding is a very americanized version of rococo chanel kind of well i'm like chanel just rococo well, and yes, and I'm also, like, I'm someone who studies history and art history, so I understand a little bit more than probably the average person. But with that being said, I didn't get... If she said her her cliché was Marie Antoinette, and I didn't really get that from this. With that said, I think the look is great. I love the Bride of Frankenstein hair. Yeah. Don't know what it has to do with Marie Antoinette. But I thought she looked gorgeous. And even though the boot fell down, mm, actually, no. I was going to say, she kept walking even though the boot fell down. But I feel like she kind of dragged the runway out a little bit too much past that. And it kind of made the whole thing look awkward. I would have scrapped the hat. Like, I don't think you need that as a part of yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She had like a whole bunch in there, right? In Inside that dress. Well, no, she goes to the back of the runway. Somehow this hat appears. And then she walks the runway again. With a boot that had literally, like, was hanging on for dear life. Oh, sorry. No, I'm watching this now on my TV as well. Oh, work. Uh, She also, like, uh, reaches into her dress and reveals, like, two little French golden baguettes. (laughs) Oh, yes, the golden baguettes. I remember that. Yes. Yeah, Um, this... If I love the concept, uh, it doesn't also as um ing- ignorant um Western Hemispherean um the only like Marie Antoinette I kind of get really get out of it is the frills and the makeup, um, the hair a little bit as well for me at least. But I couldn't really get it from the hair. To me, to me, it looks just very much like you know brushed up and hairsprayed kind of thing like it's yeah. like you can you can see all the ends up at the top sure yeah rather than when i think of like marie and Antoinette kind of thing i kind of i think of like you know the box in a way yeah yeah we give it a 3.5 i'm gonna give it a three i'm gonna give it a three Ellipse. This was clever. I love this. I love this. Yeah. Simple but effective. Uh the the dress. Sorry, no, no, I don't mean that in a bad way. Cause I actually like really love this. I think the hat really just pulls it all together. The wine glass that she holds puts it all yeah. together. Um this just looks really good on her. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is very clever. I love the where where in the world is Carmen San Diego kind of hat. That <laughs> that's kind of what puts it over the top for me. It's just like the wide, the wide hat. Just yeah, and the, the great earrings. Ellipse is in the same boat as Paloma, where she knows how to marry camp and fashion. Yeah, but I don't think we see camp that often from Ellipse, and I'd love to see Ellipse push camp. Because I feel like Ellipse, as a designer, someone who sews, has a lot of talent. Yeah, but doesn't know how to add that like little bit of camp that you sort of need for Drag Race because beautiful gowns are all well and good, but you know Nicole Page Brook got sent home in a lovely gown. Mm-hmm. Was it lovely? Was it a gown compared to what some of the other competitors were wearing that episode? Yes, love you, Pandora. Uh, um, I'm gonna give a lip. 4.5. I'm gonna give I'm also gonna give ellipse a 4.5. I'm gonna give ellipse a four. Party. I'm the main girl today. Yeah. By half a decimal point, but still counts. It's not me. <laughs> Yay. La brioche. I love this. Same. Invented camp. Invented tomfoolery. Invented baguettes. 
I also love that you can talk about Libria Shea on Twitter and you don't have to tag her and she will find it and she will like it. <laughs> She's that. been through a lot of my tweets where I say how much I love her. So if in some twisted reality, Libria Shea, if you're watching this, sending you lots of love. Robbery. We all are sending you a lot. Oh, absolutely. As for this outfit, it is high camp. I love the gingham because, like, I obviously associate gingham with um, picnics. But also, this specific shape and color and pattern print of dress is very stereotypical of how school uniforms for primary school girls are in the UK. Oh. So it just reminds me of the primary school I went to when I was between years one and two with my uh, sister. So it's it's making me laugh a lot. But yeah, the fucking baguette arms are just absolutely everything. Baguette arms. It's like, yeah. And I know the dress isn't the best fit and it's not the most amazing dress in the world, but solely for the hyper-realistic baguette arms... I'm giving this a five, and anyone who disagrees can find me. <laughs> I'm also giving it a five. I love this. Fives across the board. Yay! Fives across the board. Fives across the board. Fives across the board. Oh. Just, I love this. I love the hair, too. I love her in this hair. No, every, every, to me, it's like everything about this outfit. Like, it screams, like, French cliche to me. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. This is really the category, I'm going to be honest, that I thought saved her from being in the bottom. Mm. I w actually, I would have loved some bows on the stockings. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I don't need it, but it would have been nice. Oh, uh, yeah. let's get crazy. Instead of bows, pretzels. <laughs> No, 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 no. Instead of pretzels, thinly sliced uh, pieces of baguette. Rita oh, baguette. Let's, get even let's get even crazier. How about an e uh, how about two eclairs on on her on her tits? Ah! Oh my god. I we've been robbed of the best buns in France. <laughs> we truly have. Sort of muse. Okay, I love this. <laughs> I love this. Because, like, she is portraying every white woman I've had an argument with in my life on Twitter. She I... is representing the J.K. Rowlings of the world. Do you know what I mean? Like, she is representing those absolutely fucking twisted, busted, middle-class white women with the holy that I, and now that I deal that with, is. that I deal with, that I've dealt with the last two days at work. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That being said, the actual outfit itself is very well made. The jewelry is gorgeous. I love the bows. And I love, <laughs> I don't know why it's killing me, but so in this like blonde bob is giving me. This, this, this is a, this uh, Rafaela Cara wig. <laughs> Let's, no, I'm not associating Rafaela Cara with these horrid fucking wigs. This excuse for Rafaela Cara wigs that they used. Um, she must have taken this wig from Dark Race Italia. I'm, I, 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 forgot, I forgot I've only competed on that season's name. Apart I only remember, remember one. Only Divinity. Remember. remember Divinity? She wore, she, Sharon left that wig in the parking lot and so I picked it up and said, thank no! you. Actually, you know, when they took the set, then they were transporting the set from Spain all the way to France. So I found this wig backstage and was like, what is this raggedy wig No, 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 no. They went from Italia to Spain to France. And it's... Lucretia Lubamba left this wig <laughs> from Italia. Foul! I was just going to say, like, that's the only one queen I can remember the name of from Italia. Uh, Electra Bionic, the only winner to never win a maxi challenge. <laughs> How could you forget icon, legend, and star Electra Bionic? I'll have you know James Mansfield won season nine. Thank oh, you. um... Back back to Swat and Muse. Um, so then they turn around. Ass. It's okay. a detox moment. Here's my question. So we don't blur titties, but we blur ass? Oh, it wasn't blurred for me. Oh. It wasn't blurred for was, me. It was blurred for me. Oh. Wild. But I, you yeah, know what? I, got to see it. I think the French have much like a liberal reaction to breasts. Yeah. I think Free the Nipple's probably been more successful over there, but that's because oh, yeah. French women are very fierce like that. Yes. That is true. 
And Soa has a really nice ass. Uh, yeah. They do. They do. Yeah. So if um, you're a bottom, call me. I, I don't know. I hate you. I hate you. I hate um, you. I'm gonna give this a four point five. I I think it's a solid four. I think it's a five. Okay, Diva. With Ooh, this look, twisted, this busted rig on her head. The of the group. Being the bitch and the savior at the I'm same never time. Never the group. Yay! It's about damn time. In a minute, I'm in need I'll be right. Minute. Minute. right. Hey, we're not a big enough channel for them to care. Doesn't mean you shall be on them. Okay. It Another lovely cast from Cam. Cam. I know. That's not what we see at first, though. But I will say I love the the croissant inspiration yeah. because oh, I really want a fucking croissant now. Thank you, Cam, for oh, ruining honestly. my time. Yeah, she looks okay. wonderful. So, um. Before before we talk about this, um, so obviously Cam comes out to this runway wearing like an apron, a frilled apron, white with like a splat on it. Also, kind of accessorized with like a chef's hat. Yeah, I was gonna say like Cam might have Cam Loki borrowed one of those like paint splats from Paloma and put it on her. Oh my god! Her apron, <laughs> Not only to take it off on the runway. <laughs> Literally that. I love the wig once again. Kristoff popped off. What I will say is, at this point, Cam, put the fucking corsets away. Because we have had several, many of these very wonderfully made corsets. And you have changed it up once. But for the love of all that is fucking holy, enough. Yeah. That being said, I did really like this look and I really responded yeah. to it. But um, for the fact that is another corset bodysuit, I'm giving this a 3.5. Oh. This is my yeah, law road okay. moment. So I think it's a solid concept. I think it is executed pretty well. I just wish there was a lot there. I wish that the cat videos could have gone even further. She put it uh, that she could have like, you know, put some more croissants on her, you know, Maybe even the e eclairs on the on the on the breasticles. Um, I want eclair now. <laughs> you know, like I I just wish there was more added on. Yeah, to Drag Race friends, stop making me want to buy baked goods. I don't have the money, and also I'm doing really well on my diet at the minute. You bastards. <laughs> yeah. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this like a three. Oh, I'm going to be a lot nicer. I think this is the best uh, corset that she's worn. I think this is the best corset outfit that she's worn uh, overall. Um, I'm going to give it a four. I disagree to that point just because that Jean-Paul Gaultier gown was kind of everything. It was. It was. But I got a lot more personality and a lot more of cam from this look than I did the Gaultier look. So that's yeah. the only reason I say that. Also, turns out Cam's boyfriend also does drag. Oh, season so prepare, two? Yeah, prepare for season two. A mustache man. drag as well. Yes, I support it. The arsenic. La Big Berta. It's camp. It's and camp. I love to see well. Scylla Black represented on Drag Race. She's a journalist, ladies and gentlemen. She's a Frenchman, ladies and gentlemen. This was ever The reveal. From the thing, she takes the thing down, and it's an accordion. It's an accordion. Bitch. Oh my god! Bitch. One thing Big Beth is gonna do is gonna give you a good fucking reveal. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've learned. This is high camp. This is this reminds me of like good old high drag from the old days. I really love it, and I have a lot of respect for it. As for the integrity of the outfit. She's referencing someone that I don't particularly know, so I will give her a pass for the choice of hair color because I'm assuming that's a reference to the actual person. Yes. The gold four-way stretch fabric, however, underneath looks really cheap and I don't like it. I also don't understand what's going on with the wrists, but I'm also going to hope that's a reference to the character. 
Um, I love the color that's like piano keys. I just think, I think if the bodysuit part was made out of like a black velvet or like a colored velvet, it would have looked classier and it would have reminded me more of a pianist. Right. Um, see, I feel bad giving this a score the same as Cam's previous look, but I don't want to give it more than that. Like, I want to hear your thoughts first. I personally really like it as, you know, a, a fellow musician. Um, you know, I love the accordion reveal. Um, I, I, I really love the, the campiness of it all. Um, I think if she, if she, I just feel like the gold, like, bodysuit doesn't exactly, like, fit her as well. As there were it, a lot of, there were a lot of fish, fit issues. Yeah, I think if if she put it like if she put if she padded, if she put a bit more padding on, um, maybe maybe like that body will look snatched. Sure. Um, I don't. I also okay. We haven't talked about this yet for Big Bertha, but the light, at, <laughs> the light thing that's like the light tail that's coming out of her butt. It yeah, was... there was like a thing. I was assuming that's something to do with an accordion. Um, I've never encountered an accordion. I've never played an accordion because I have frequent sex. So accordion is just not something that's going to be in my life. Um, yeah, I was wondering what the tale was. I'll tell you, it's not the accordion. No. At least that, not that I would know of. I think it's a reference to the specific person she was doing. Again, I don't know the reference either, but... Um... I think it's good. I liked the reveal, obviously. Um, I wanted this in any other color other than gold. Because yeah. the gold really clashes with the orange hair for me. Mm -hmm. um, and again, yes. I don't know if the gold is a specific reference to this person. If it is, comments, please let us know. But with that being said, I'm going to give Bertha a four for this look. I'm going to give Bertha a 3.5. Um there's an accordionist, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to give the accordionist a free. That's fair. Yeah. 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 All right. And the third category where I feel like our scores are going to go down significantly can film festival realness. Now, okay, here's the thing. Before, before, before I show these photos, um, we had to do a lot of work today to get the photos of these looks because the Drag Race France Instagram has not uploaded them yet. Uh, hateful ass bitches. With that being said, ignore the quality of these photos, please. Thank you, because the first one is Paloma. Okay, I love this. It's well made, and once again, it's giving camp. And it gives me, like... I was confused what we were going to see out of this category because I assumed since it was Cannes Film Festival Realness that we were going to see people in red carpet premiere kind of outfits. Um, fun story, I once saw Jonah What's-His-Face at a red carpet, the really famous one. Mm -hmm. uh, is it Jonah? Jonah Hill? Not Jonah Hill. Jonah, that's a person. 21 Jump Street? Jonah yes. Hill? Jonah Hill. It's yeah, yeah Jonah and I, all my friends were like, come on, let's go see Jonah Hill. This was at the Berlin Film Festival. And um, I didn't realize how loud I was speaking. But as we got to the red carpet, I said, wait, who's Jonah Hill again? And someone with a camera turned around and gave me the dirtiest look I have received in my entire life. So um, to whoever that person at the Berlinale Film Festival in 2018 uh, was... I'm so sorry that I offended you, and I hope you managed to stuff Jonah Hill's entire boot in your mouth like you so desperately wanted. That being said, Paloma looks lovely, gal. <laughs> I completely derailed from what I was trying to say. <laughs> so, Cannes Film Festival. I was expecting more red carpet kind of look, but we got more resort wear, which I'm assuming is to do with the fact that Cannes is in the Bay of Cannes, like it is yeah. a seaside city. Yeah, so the, the requirement for the look was you had to use at least three of the items, but then other than that, I'm like, are they using fabric? I was very confused by the by the confines of this challenge. And as someone who likes to have the uh, full explanation of something before I do it, I just found the whole category confusing. With yeah. that being said, 
I don't love this look. I'm gonna be honest. I I I there's something childish about it that I don't love. They had to make these out of fucking inflatable animals though. Like, let's be real. I think some people did a lot better with what they had a than parrot? what Paloma did. A parrot with a dolphin? Sure. Are we are we getting that reference? No. No. They had to no. make hats using inflatable outfits, inflatable animals from um one episode of season three. And Shangela made like a really weird parrot fucking a dolphin kind of fascinator. What challenge was that? It was a mini challenge. Uh oh, uh, I know what you're talking about. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. For I was like, that was girl. not a maxi challenge, Mom. Oh, the hats? Yeah. Oh, no, the hats. Like- where Shangela just glued some shit to sit some shit. A parrot to a dolphin. A parrot? Or was it the dolphin? shoes? No, I No, remember. it was the hat. The hat. Okay. I remember that. Um, with that being said, I think the construction of this look is really good. I just don't particularly love it. But objectively, I'm gonna give it a four. I'm also gonna give um, it a four. Yeah, I think I think it's well made. I just I'm not a big fan of the hair either. Um, as well, I think it's, I think it's, like, the, the salmon pink ostrich feathers that kind of throw me off. The ostrich feathers that are, like, around her, like, elbows, I'm not opposed to, but it's the ones that are, like, on, on her boobs that kind of throw me off about it. Um, so I'm probably, I'm gonna give it, like, a, a four as well. Yeah. I was going to be real shady there for a second, but I'm not going to do that to you today, Sam. No, you can say it. Oh, I was going to say all of that deliberation and uh, and time just to give the same score that Eris and I did. <laughs> well, I didn't get to give my critique. Well. Speak faster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sam, what did you so think I of the a banana? <laughs> <laughs> I hate you guys so much. No, you don't. <laughs> Sam, what did you think of Lolita Banana? I Actually, thought she looked great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. This was no. so well made. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words with this. Yeah, Ooh. I'm shocked Lolita wasn't in the top. She looked really good. So, technically, she was. Oh, yeah, because they didn't say anyone was safe. They week. didn't give yeah. anybody it safe. Well, okay, let me look at the... Because, so they call her... No, so she was technically safe. Because she was, she was called first to be safe. And then um, the top three were given their, like, you did the challenge and you did it great. Before Here's announcing... a RuPaul-esque pun. Exactly. So, technically, Lolita was safe for this challenge, which, again, I disagree with. I also I disagree very much. The blue, the blue, the fucking yellow and cerulean works really well, and, like, she made that corset. I think the only issue with it is where the skirt attaches sort of on the waist. It's very squared off. And I think that could have been hidden just a little bit better, but <clears throat> other than that, I really love this. Yeah, that's a fair point, but... I- yeah. It doesn't bother me too much. What I what I think really ties it together as well is the eye makeup as yeah. well. Because she's gorgeous. Yeah, no, because um the eye makeup kind of matches with um the skirt with the yeah, with the bottom half of it. Yeah. Um also like her hair her hair also kind of has the rhinestones in it too. Yeah. Um no, this look is very well done. I don't know if we're giving scores yet, but... You can. I'm giving this a five. Ooh. I'm giving this a 4.5. And I'm also going to give it a 4.5. I think it was very smart for her to brand in this part of the challenge because she was able to. And I know not many people were really able to given the items that they had, but I thought it was very smart of her to lean into that. Um... Because she hasn't given any... She has not given us banana through and through on the runway yet. Except the for the end. yellow. That's literally 
the only banana we get out of it. Yeah. Um, with that said, I'm going to give it a 4.5 as well. I think this is incredibly well constructed. It's so I'm not. I'm not surprised that she wasn't in the like in the top three because this episode was kind of predictable in that regard. But I thought what she yeah. did was really, really well done. Let's move to the Grand Dame. Okay. <sighs> I don't know why the judges like this. I really did not like this. This is the first outfit the Grand Dame has worn. That I've been like, this is bad. Like, I really did, I just really did not get it. And I guess because it's more resort wear and what I was looking for was red carpet ready. I just, the stick on boobs didn't work for me as well. Like, La Grand Dame is one of those queens that I will let her get, will let get away without wearing a titty. So I don't know why she put the shiny stick on titties on. Yeah. This chest piece didn't really sit right. And I love blue and orange as a storyline. Well, it's more blue and red. I love blue and red as a storyline because pink. they're opposing. More like magenta, I think. Something like that. Anyway. Okay. Um, but I, no, I love it because they're opposite to the steer, steering wheel, color wheel. And yeah. I love the wig. Mm-hmm. But overall, as a look for me, I just really did not rate this. Yeah, I'm kind of like on a similar boat. Um, I. I enjoy the craftiness of it because you can clearly see like oh it's kind of the rope that connects like the noodles things together as you yeah. kind of saw in the workroom um she accessorized with like cool with like noodle earrings um as well um i i think you can see clearly see with the skirt that's a towel <laughs> yeah um I'm not I'm not mad at like the bottom half. It's the top half that kind of uh drives me away from it. I also wish she she used more of the more of the pool noodles that were um along that row. Yeah. I, I really hate this. Thank you. I don't I think her face looks great. The wig is great. I hate the bra part. I hate the fake titty. This is a pencil maxi skirt with a slit. And while I do appreciate the the like pool noodle detailing, it looks cheap as fuck. Yeah, yeah it's just... Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate that when she made something for herself, the taste level just kind of dipped. Yeah. And I hope that's not something we see in future because I'm sure the Grand Dame can probably make something nicer than this. Yeah. But Mama, this is a boot for me. Um, this is a two. Uh, this is a, also a two for me. Twos, twos, twos across the board. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is this is not good. I'm no. shocked. No, I'm baby, shocked no. she was in the top. Truly shocked. Yeah, I wasn't. I was. I thought she was in the bomb, honestly. Me too. So Just because I. of the presentation of the second outfit, and then for this altogether. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, we'll talk about it. So let's move on to a lips. I think it kind of gives the same to me. Especially in terms of the material, it kind of gives me like a similar t- aesthetic to um, the first look that she presented on the runway, except it doesn't have like the yeah. flags. Yeah, and I know, I know, lip and ellipse knows that you know this isn't their best, and it's. I was so confused by that because I loved this outfit. I thought she looked really good. I do too. I, no, I thought it was really well made. Did. Like, Ellipse has the tailoring skills behind her to make some really crazy shit, which is probably why she was let down. Mm-hmm. But the pants were incredible, and I love, 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 love um, an exaggerated sleeve or a dramatic sleeve. Mm-hmm. So I just yeah. don't get why she was so down on herself by this. I, I think, think it's probably more planned. Yeah. yeah. On this and it's probably a lot to do with Ellipse's confidence level. Which I'm, I'm questioning at this point. Like, she... I I think I like her. 
I, I think. I don't really know. She's not really giving me anything, if I'm honest. And, like, I want to like her because I think her fashion and I think her, her drag aesthetic is very, very good. And we saw that in episode one with that performance. But I have not gotten anything else really from her since that moment. And as much as I really, really like this outfit, the the performance of the outfit was not it at all. No, and she's just kind of sulked down the runway. Yeah. And, yeah. Bitch, if you don't like what you're wearing, don't show that on your face. Whereas... Lala Ree went out on stage in the that absolute fucking war crime of a dress and still tried to sell it. Well, and I was going to say, that was something that Kitty talked about with everybody in the workroom. It's like, even if you're not at your most confident, you need to not show us that you're not your most confident. You need to be at your most confident. It does not matter what's happening. You need to show us confidence. Where we'll talk about Swat Amuse. Swat killed that in that regard, where Ellipse really didn't. And because of that, for me, based on the look and the performance of the look, I'm going to give it a 3.5. I am also, yeah, for the same reasons, I'm also going to give it a 3.5. I'm going to give it a fall. Fair. Fair. Uh, Fun fact, uh, you've given all three of her looks a four, Eris. (laughs) Well, I just think she's unforgettable. I think she's forgettable. I think she's unforgettable. No. Actually, oh baby. Oh no. No baby. No baby. No. 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 She walked onto that runway and I said, "Oh no, she's going home." Yeah. Uh, I like yeah. that she's holding a crab like a handbag. I think that's Me really too. Cool. I really liked that. Yeah. Fun fact, my older sister, hi Holly if you're watching this, has a massive phobia of crabs. And one time, me and my other sister, Ellie, found a crab at the beach, put it in a bucket, and showed it to Holly purposely to upset her. You're a Sorry bitch. about that, Holly. Oh, I like her hair. I like I'm her willing hair. to bet this is another Kristoff wig. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I like the necklace. Yeah, I like the headpiece. I like the shoes. Yeah, the shoes are, are we like just talking? avoiding talking right. about the dress? Yeah. We're just get- <laughs> The stockings are you too. It's a satin pillowcase with a cut up the middle. And then the cut through the middle is not even hemmed. There wasn't a hem. There wasn't a hem. There wasn't there a was hem. No hem. There wasn't a hem. There was a rip. Here. Nowhere you looked was there a hem. Nowhere yeah. we looked was a yeah. yeah. And listen, I love Le Brioche, but yeah. this I don't want to say this is a golden boot of the season because I Honestly, I kind of prefer this to what the Grand Dame wore for this particular runway. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's fogly. It's giving scoot. Um, with that being said, I'm going to give this a 2 and I'm going to add a 0. 0.5 on for the crab, so it's a 2.5. I'm going to give this a 2. Actually... Logan, can I be a pain in the ass? Can I change my score? Yeah, what's up? Can I give it a 1.5? Yeah, because that's what I'm giving it. I think on a scale of 0 to 5, 5 is what we've seen through a lot of tonight, and a 0 is all Ari's bag ball look. <laughs> <laughs> Drink so every Manny... time Eris mentions La La Rie in this episode, honestly. So that puts Manny Morphus' patchwork dress from season 14 at good 0.5. Yeah. It was well made. The colors were just ugly. Uh, Listen, you can't expect a straight man to have an eye for color theory. That's fair. He yeah. was doing his best. Fair. He was. Let's move on to someone who showed a lot of confidence in this runway, and that's Swat Amuse. I'm surprised the judges hated it. Now, yes, was it incredibly basic? Yeah. The dress itself was basic, but I loved the epaulettes made out of shellfish the, like the, the, um, yeah yeah the um the muscle shell i Very thought that was smart. i 
I would have loved, and I know she didn't have the material to do it. I would have loved if the whole gown had been it, or maybe if it had come down onto the, onto like the breast area. Mm. I think maybe I would have liked that, or maybe like the lining at the bottom of the dress, maybe hot glue some of those on there. Hey, she can make knee pads. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Or she could put them on her biceps so that she has muscles on her muscles. Right, right. Ah, uh, <laughs> this is. Or she this... could put them in a bag and start swinging them around violently and say she's having a muscle spasm. Come on, Estrella Stravaganza, swing your burrito. I. Oh. That being said, one thing I will say about this is makeup was on point as always, and so are in long hair is always going to be a turn on always, because yeah. so it looks oh, yeah. so good in this long sh like blind hair yeah like the other girls wish yeah and listen cam is a pretty girl but she's not a pretty girl in the way so a demuse is a pretty girl she's a pretty girl yeah like it gave me kind of a similar to aesthetic to like kiara from it, this from... gave me kiara down because Kiara made this wore the same damn gown in gold on Canada season one. Yep. And Valentina wore the same damn dress on All Stars Four in silver. I tried, I tried oh, she did. Silver, and so did Naomi Smalls. And Naomi Smalls wore the same gown. I forget what color Naomi's was. Season but... eight pre 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 premiere. Oh, that part. Oh yeah, her entrance. Was it her entrance or? No, no, no. It was the oh, runway no, was look when she had the boats. Now. Yeah, and oh, um, Miley yeah. was like, "I think you should have been and, in the bottom." And Naomi Smalls made the same thing, but in blue. Um, when did I she make it in blue? Because that was the color of the boat she was given. No, she the dress was still gold. Oh, was it really? The, yeah, yeah. The boat was blue. The dress. Well, was Naomi blue. made it in gold. Um, with that being the same said, kind of gold as well. Yeah, with yeah. That and then said, she went on to tell Layla she was giving entourage. You're also giving entourage. Anyway, fuck you. Okay. Um, with that being said, I cannot in good faith give this anything higher than a 2.5. Uh, I want to give this a 2.75, but I won't make Logan do the maths on that because I'm not a horrid person. Thank you. So with that being said, I'm going to round this up to a 3. Because it's not bad. It's just simple it's just and clean. Good. Yeah. I think... So, I'm going to give it a 2.5 plus an extra 0.5 because I love the shell shoulders. So, it's it's going to be um a 3. Mass. How dare you? I told y'all, this is a great photo of Cam's look. And I'm shocked. <laughs> she was giving Finding Shimo. I love this. I this really love this. I love the she is thing giving like. different silhouettes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for I trying. Something... Worry, of course I... <laughs> Thank you for trying something different, Cam. I know it was very hard for you. That being said, I love this like B fifty twos esque dress. I love the yeah, yep, like nineteen fifties futurism of it all. It's really camp. It's giving um. The deadliest snatch. I'm really here for it. It's giving, in the words of uh, Aris Envy, interesting angular movements. Interesting angular movements. I'm shocked you didn't say that. I should have, because like the wig is giving interesting no, angular I think movements. It's, I think that's supposed to be a fin. It is, yeah. It's giving yeah. interesting angular fin movements. I literally just realized that now. That's a fin. Yeah. It's giving finding hoary. And a stoned fin, too. There you go, Eris. You did it. You got one good joke in. Thank you. You're welcome. Bitch. You're welcome. Um, I you think this is, this is so incredibly... I love this. I, am I? Am I? Uh... No, I, I, I'm I, in... Yeah, I'm in love with this look, too. This is I'm going to give it a five. This is a five for me, too. Uh... <gasps> It's a five. No, yeah, it's a five. Yeah, it's a five. I, I can't deny that I think this is just so well done. You cannot deny these notes. Well. <laughs> I can't. No. Okay. 
I mentioned earlier. What is this photo? <laughs> that I is the best photo I could pull, honey. I mentioned earlier that zero is Lala Ree's bag look. <laughs> oh no! And if I could say, if I know I'm not going to go into annoying half decimals because I'm a good person. Thank you. But if I could give this a 0 0.1, I would give this a 0 0.1. Oh, this is a blue velvet unhemmed nappy sack with a yellow <laughs> belt around it. And I'm disappointed because Bertha has so many wonderful outfits, but much like the Grand Dame when it comes to sewing something for herself, it seems like the taste goes out the window. And I just want you all to know, there is nothing wrong with wearing a mumu or um, a, what's it called? A a caftan? Caftan, oh, yeah. Yeah, caftan. But um, this is the caftan that Ross Matthews would have worn on his trip to the, like, I don't know. What's that? Where's that ski resort where all the gay people Aspen. go? I can't Aspen. Yeah, this is giving Ross Matthews in his cabin at the Aspen, having a wonderful time with his very handsome husband. Yes. But it is not for the main stage of Drag Race. This is, I am so disappointed I'm upset, and frankly, I'm I'm going to do that thing that Ross Matthews does. But you know when you buy something, and you're not sure <laughs> whether you want to keep it, but you've got still got the tag on it, and you're like, uh, you might return it. And you know how when he said that to Monet Exchange, he was like, well, I'm pulling the tag off tonight. I'm actually gluing the tag back onto Big Bertha, and I'm considering returning. I'm putting an extra tag on. <laughs> Oh. Try, try to forge it for and it. I'm sewing up the hole I ripped in it because I want a full refund. Oh, and then and then Big Bertha turns around. No. Oh. And you get like a, a little gold moment. That's oh. a gold, but she's not coming in first. No. And I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm being harsh on Bertha because Bertha is one of my favorites. Same. But the dress is giving, for lack of better words, ugly down. Oh, um, okay. I'm going to joke for this, but you know what it's giving me? Oh, no. It's giving me very central pay. Not oh, central pay! <laughs> Actually, you know what it's giving me? Do you know that scene in Lilo and Stitch where, Lilo, where Stitch gets hit with a truck? This is what the floor of the uh, highway should have looked like after Stitch got hit by the truck. Am I being too mean? I feel like I'm being mean. That being said, 0.5. Oh. I'm gonna give this a... Mm, uh, but I love it. Uh, I have to do it. It's a one. I don't care. If Divina DeCampo came out on this, I would still give the same speech. I think her hair looks great. It does. I think her legs look great. They do. And for that, I'm going to give her the same I score I gave Brioche, which is a 1.5. And listen, I love the hair. I, actually, I, I, I'm impartial to the hair. I don't really care. And I love her legs, and I think she's a gorgeous woman, a gorgeous bearded woman. But I'm judging you on how you sewed an outfit. And... um. The big brother oh, shows us he has the inability to do that. I'm living for the shoes, though. No. Not for the outfit, though. I just love the shoes alone. No. Love well, you, Big Bertha. Yes, truly love you, Big Bertha. Truly. So that's that. While we do math, and by we, I mean me, um, let's talk about our guest judges for this episode, who were Veronique Philippa... <laughs> Philip Filippo Nats, that's a word. Um, the editor of what? Vogue France? L France. L France. No, uh, just which the editor Cam of L. Oh uh, yeah. With no, it was L France because Cam makes a point in yep. um to her confessional to talk about how she was the first drag queen in L France, which I love. And style icon Chantal Thomas. Who I did not know, but thought was fabulous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chantal looked amazing. I'm also, at this point in Drag Race France, willing to take the tag off Daphne Berkey and add her to the list of um, really great uh, women on panels of Drag Race alongside Anna Lockie and um, Chiara Francini. I agree. 
I want Ch- Chiara Francini's Drag Race. Chiara Francini's Drag Race. <laughs> Excited Italian noises. Chiara Francini's Drag Race. May the best ah! win. <laughs> <laughs> Not the. See, so I haven't watched Drag Race Italia yet, for those of y'all that don't know. So mm. I don't, I wouldn't know these references yet. She's just so excited to be there. And I loved every moment Chiara Francini was on stage. Like every moment something good would happen or like something enjoyable happened, she'd just be on that like judge's counter. Like, yeah. Neither of you were yes. looking, but I pulled a very manic expression. No, I saw, I saw I her. Heard, I heard. Yes. Okay. I have, it's I've done that. Uh, peripheral. Oh, math. Yeah. Sorry. I, I was doing math really quick. Um, yeah. All right. Let's start with alphabetical order. So, say, or, well, actually, Sam, but Eris. Um, <laughs> so, Eris, you actually had a tie for your winner. With 9.25 each, your winners are Cam Hugh and Lolita Banana. Congratulations, Lolita Banana. Yay, Lolita Banana. No, I, I mean, I won't kid myself. I will say Cam did spectacular this episode. I'm sure. surprised Lolita was my winner, because like, if I had to pick, I probably wouldn't have picked Lolita. <laughs> but, um... They were tied. The other person you had in the top was Paloma. Paloma probably would have been my pick for the win. Well, I think according it... to your scores. What what tanked Paloma's score? What did I score Paloma the lowest on? Was it the art look? Um, the second look. Yeah. And then oh, your... well, was still... so you actually so your lowest score was Bertha. Yeah. With a four point five, and you actually have a tie for your second lowest between Brioche and the Grand Dame. Oh. So I really like this cast. I, I actually really like I love pretty much cast. everyone on this cast. And I'm sure when Cam stops being Cam edited into this when Cam persona, stops being a horror, I bet she's gonna be phenomenal gal. Lovely gal. I mean um, I'm still hoping out on the fact that we got comments saying that Cam was just being edited a certain way. I'm still yeah. hoping out on those being true. I feel like she's being edited in the same way that Ahura was. That's why I made the comparison. But I feel yeah, like she's a she's much better person. she's still saying all of these things. Yeah. That's the thing. Um, um, the funniest thing to Eris is your two safe people have the same score. Oh, I was just tying everyone up, huh? Yep. Oh. Uh, Ellipse and Soa both had eight. Agreeable. So, time for my scores since we're doing alphabetical things. Um, my winner outright was Cam. And I would agree. My top, uh, completing out the top three for me were Lolita and Paloma. Uh, My low placement was Le Grand Dom, and my bottom two were Brioche and Bertha. Oh. And, um, yeah. So, Sam, this is where it gets interesting. Okay. Sam, your winner was Lolita Banana. Yeah. I That would have been my pick, too. And rounding out your top three were Paloma and Cam. Yep. So we think all have the same top three. Just goes to show we all have the same opinions. Um, <laughs> your bottom, however, your low placement is Brioche. Sam, how could you? And your bottom two are uh, the Great Lady and Bertha. It's sad. It's sad in this world. Yeah. Well, this even my scores say that, even my scores wish that Brioche So, Legrand, you gave Legrandom a 6 and Brioche a 6.5. Okay. It's yeah. like a, it's a half... It's a half decimal difference. Yeah. But uh, that's kind of not what happened. Yeah. Um, we also, all three of us, had Ellipse and Soa safe. We had yeah, the just... same bottom three. We had the Can same we be surprised, top... though? Because we were scoring everything no. the same. No. 
But I feel like it was quite definitive. This episode. Maybe next time we all do our own individual scores and then see, because I don't know if it's groupthink. I don't want to think it's groupthink, but it might be groupthink. Um, <laughs> so we got the winner of this challenge being Cam. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I that had her is. as my winner. I'm cool yeah, with she it. Right. I, are we surprised that Cam won the ball? No. no. No, she's exceptionally talented at picking clothes for herself and also for... Sewing, choosing a boyfriend like, and her boyfriend makes her really amazing wigs yes so um and then in i mean i won't one. knock cam's talents no. i'm just bothered by cam's attitude a little bit but i will never knock cam's talent because cam is a very beautiful and very talented other person. than her singing don't sing but with that being oh, said Le our, was a singer our bottom two is la brioche and soi de muse as you all just heard we all disagree in one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. I it, don't understand why Soa was there. I'm honestly. No, I have no clue. I am just no like scoring her safe myself. I honestly don't know. And I I, I don't want to think it's to eliminate La Brioche. But I definitely think putting. So the top three ends up being Cam, Paloma, and La Grand Dame. That was to save La Grand Dame. Because I yeah. think if you put the Grand Dom in a lip sync against La Brioche, I think La Brioche wins, especially to this song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Although we've yet to see what the Grand Dom's like, dance talent is. Well, lip yeah, dance so talent I don't want to assume. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we kind of were given a bit of an idea when they did the whole... Um, with the, the, the talent, talent, yeah. yeah. The talent, as well as um the mini challenge where they were oh, um, the rock, with, yeah. with the drag kings, mm -hmm. um and obviously uh La Grande um, won that challenge. True, as a character though, as a so... character that's the thing. But yeah. I will say is we've seen we saw this episode that um La Grande um, knows how to pull off a technically perfect duck walk, old way style duck walk. Yeah. So I'm wondering. Because she is very beautiful in that sense, I wonder if she has any like ballroom history behind her because she is from right. Paris, which would be really great. But I feel like it probably would have been mentioned by now. Yeah, but you never know. No. That being said, um, I love this song for this lip sync. Yeah, Brioche and Soa lip sync to Pookie by Aya Nakamura. This is one of the most evenly matched lip syncs I've seen in a long time on Drag Race. Yep. I truly thought it could have gone either way. And I, think... I thought that Soa swept, actually. Really? I love La Bruce and I feel like she was doing the best she could, but I feel like this way Soa emoted, my eyes were strictly on Soa for the majority of this. I think it was close. I definitely, it was definitely the closest. I think for me, towards the end, Brioche got a little desperate, in my opinion, and just started, she did like the, um, yeah. Cartwheel the, into the, the house. Executed. Cartwheel, her headpiece was coming off. I would have just gotten rid of the headpiece to start. Same. But I really appreciated the nuances that oh. Brioche brought to the song. Whereas, like, Soa was doing a very good performance. I can't knock her performance at all. And she was hitting the nuances as well. But I think I was a little bit more surprised by Brioche giving the level of lip sync that she did. And she held her own, whereas, like, Love and La Diva, you're great and all, but Soa swept. And, like, going into the song, as soon as I heard, like, the first 10 seconds of the song, I was like, oh, Soa has this. And I was very pleasantly surprised with what Brioche brought. So I thought it was a little bit closer. Personally. Yeah. Oh, I'm, closer. Kind of, I'm kind of on that same boat with Logan as well. I think they, it was, it was a solid, a very solid, like, lip sync battle. Um, they both held their own, but I do kind of agree that Soa did win that lip sync. Yeah. And I think it ha it's very common for queens to kind of get desperate towards the end of the number. Yeah. Whereas we have not seen that in either lip sync from Soa. Yeah. With that being yeah. said, stop trying to taste her. I said it in the last episode, and I'm going to say it again. Stop tasting her. Don't, yeah, like, because if Soa doesn't make the top, I'm gonna be very annoyed. Sorry, yeah. you know the sorry. What we what we mean by that is don't give Soa the taste don't edit. Taste her. T a y c e. Taste Drag Race UK. Please don't taste anyone. Not in this economy. We, yeah, yeah, no. 
I mean, some people maybe deserve it. JK Rowling. Just don't, yes. Most of the people I interacted with at work today. Anyway. From court. Soa wins. I'm sad. Our brioche is gone. The best My heart thing. hurts. So does I mine. really did not expect her to be the next person eliminated. Same with no, me. me neither. Based on the performance of the challenge, I can't say it was wrong. But I am upset. It doesn't feel right. No. But it's not It's not right, right, but it's okay. It's not right, but it's justified. Yeah. And I'm pissed because she goes home the episode before fucking Snatch Game. I'm going to get a really French Snatch Game. I'm excited to not know any of these people. And if Except somebody, Edith Piaf. If, if, uh, if someone does Edith Piaf, I was going to say, or if someone, for some ungodly reason, decides to do Barbara Pravi. But she, I mean, Barbara has a lot of personality to her. I'm curious if anyone's going to do a Eurovision person. Um, I think another potential that we might know as well could be like a, a Celine Dion as well. I was going to say, so I someone could do Celine. I mean, we saw Brooke do it and it wasn't great. So I'm yeah. curious <laughs> if, if anybody will do it. But... Yeah, um, I want to circle back. I know this has been a long episode, so sorry about that, y'all. Thank you for watching. Um, Eris, you had talked earlier about having an idea of who your top three, top four were, and I wanted to circle back to that. Oh, so my top three would probably be Paloma, La Grande Dame, and Big Bertha. If I had to stick someone else on that, it's interchangeable between Cam or Soa. It's probably more likely going to be Cam at this point. I think I'd agree with you. I think I'd agree as well. Yeah, I think what I want to see happen is Soa, Bertha, Grandam. That's what I would like to see happen. Right. Interchangeable with Paloma. I really like Paloma as well. But yeah. I would be shocked if Paloma doesn't make it to the end. Right. But someone I'm I'm really rooting to kind of hopefully go far because I really I want to see more from them because I kind of like what I see from them is um ellipse. Oh, I was gonna say Lolita as well. I really Lolita like too. Yeah, I really like Lolita. I don't know. I think the judges are sleeping too much on the her judges are sleeping yeah. too much on Lolita. And I don't know if she and I'm I'm hopeful to see, but I don't know if she has the depth. Of her drag. And that sounds really strange, but like with like finalists and with people that win, like there's a little bit more of like a well roundedness. And I think the comment of her saying that the only thing she's good at is dancing, I think when she gets into a challenge that's not something she feels comfortable in, she's gonna crash and burn. And I don't wanna say that, but I feel I, I feel that happening. No, yeah, because I felt like she was a good actress, but she didn't give herself the credit for that. Yeah. yeah, and then I thought she did a really good job uh, this challenge too with yeah. um, making that dress. Yeah, but any who's all that's Drag Race France episode three. Uh, thank you for joining us for almost two hours. Can you believe? No, honestly, no? I'm tired. I'm tired down. Same. Uh, with that, make sure to subscribe, like, share, all that stuff, and. Uh, for one last time until the finale, La Brioche! La Brioche! The best buns in France. How dare you deprive France of the best buns in France? How dare they? Voila! Voila! Jamais, jamais, la vie, jamais, jamais.